So as we talked about last time, this is the challenging thing in physics. We have like one, two, three concepts built on top of each other here. So it's good to have them all in one chart. All right, that might help us then with our problem. Right. And then we want to find the total power. So power is equal to the intensity times the area. Good. So that would mean um, 1,000 gigajoules times 160 meters squared. Sounds good to me. tell people to put the units in, but the units actually work out very nicely here, right? If you put in the units, everything cancels very nicely, and we can see we're on the right track. Okay. Uh, good. So, uh, so how would you interpret this answer? So, um, so that means that for... So for one second, um, the roof would absorb 660,000 joules of energy. Yeah, so a watt is a joule per second. So that means that in one second, this roof is going to absorb 160,000 joules of energy. So if we could just put a solar panel up there that would capture that, that seems like a lot of energy here. By the way, uh, a second ago I was complaining about how I didn't know what the intensity of sunlight was, and I made up the number seven watts per square meter. So it looks like it was way, way off. It's more like, well, not that badly off, only by a, a couple of orders of magnitude. So it turns out that I guess the sunlight is closer to, I guess my, my example was in the shade. But this is 1,000 uh, intensity uh, over here. Now actually, um, I think you would get big extra bonus points here if you pointed out to the instructor that he miswrote the problem. What, what, so he said the sun delivers about 1,000 watts per meter squared of energy to the Earth's surface. Mm. What's the word that's wrong in that sentence? Energy. Yeah, what should that really be? Um, intensity. Yeah, well, I, I guess I see where he's coming from. It seems a little weird to say it delivers 1,000 watts per square meters of intensity. I guess they should say it delivers energy of an intensity of 1,000 watts per meter squared. All right, I guess you couldn't crow about that too much. <laughs> he has an argument there. But anyway, notice that he didn't use the word intensity. So how the heck would you know that that's an intensity? Well, it really helps to know the units here. So this is one reason why we're always focusing on the units, because they're not always going to tell you what the concept is. So it's important to know that. And also, here on this problem, he gave you a cheat sheet. Does he have this intensity equals power over area here in the cheat sheet? Oh, actually, I don't think he put that in. I think he thinks you're supposed to know that. So first of all, you definitely need to have this formula, because he didn't include it in his cheat sheet. And even if he had, you couldn't use it until you knew that this number was an intensity. OK. Although here, actually, I guess, in this case, even if you've never heard of these concepts, you could do this just by unit analysis. Yeah. Just by unit analysis, you can see you have to cancel out the square meters. So that's also a valid way to do this. OK, so far, so good. Um. Thank you. 
Do you get to use a calculator on the test? Yeah. Oh, you might as well do that. Yeah, it looks like that calculation wasn't quite coming out right yeah. itself. I do you have a calculator with no, you? No, no, oh, I just okay. Send the negative six. And that, yes, yeah, so that's the pressure. And then if you want to find the force, <coughs> it's the pressure times. Okay. By the way, what units are these in? The pressure is in Pascal. Right. And so you take that pressure and you multiply it times the area Good. to give you the force. Right. So that times 160 gives you. And the units for that were? Yeah. All right, are we done? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, well this is actually a really good example of uh, the usefulness of this chart. You can see that you started over here, mm -hmm. and first of all you had to go from here to here in this direction. And then you got back to the intensity and you went in this direction. But there's a billion different ways that you might have to go, so it helps to have the whole chart uh, in uh, one place here. All right, so uh, now you have another fresh copy of that in your notes, and you still want to make sure that that's uh, nice and neat. Uh, and so how did you know to use this formula and not this one? Uh, because it stated that it is a perfect absorber. That's right. Uh, if they say that they've been reflecting, you want to use this. That's something you definitely want to watch out for uh, during the test. All right, anything else of importance here? I guess um, that but really it just says explain. I mean, oh. is that something that I can uh, make to your folks? Like, does that just... Well, part of the explanation is the formulas the formula that we used here. One thing you might do is explicate what the answers mean. So what does this radiation pressure mean? Uh, that means that for one meter squared, um, it'll have a force of 3 to times, 3.3 times 10 to the negative 6. Who's it? Uh, the roof. Yeah, so we know that the roof is actually 160 square meters, but if you just drew a one square meter rectangle or square on it, you know that the force on that would be 3.3 times 10 to the negative 6, whoops, newtons. Where's that force coming from? Uh, the force is coming from the sun. Yeah, that, so that's something else you might include in your explanation. You might say, it turns out that radiation, electromagnetic radiation, can exert pressure and therefore it can exert force. And here we're figuring out how much the force would be. So one thing you would include in your explanation is where the heck is this pressure coming from? Well, surprisingly, it comes from sunlight. This is surprising because we don't normally think, normally you, you turn on a light bulb, you don't feel the pressure. Right. But that's because it's not intense enough. Um, if you had, we're getting very intense light, and if you had a very large surface area, there would be an appreciable radiation pressure and force mm -hmm. on you from that. So that's something you might include in the explanation. But maybe they're just going for the equations here as well. Yeah. All right, so that's all good stuff to put in here. Any questions? No. All right, wh while we're at it then, uh, why don't we add the pointing vector to the flow chart here, so. Because again, we're mainly using these concepts now for electromagnetic radiation. A lot of these go for, a lot of these apply to other things besides electromagnetic radiation, but we're applying them to electromagnetic radiation and that's where we get our pointing vector. So, uh, Let's see here, how does that come in? Well, the pointing vector is coming from the electric field. And magnetic field. Just remember what the units are for the electric field. Electric field. Uh, um, Coulomb or 
worked it out. Okay, that's right. You worked it out. Remember our basic formula that relates force and electric field. Well, this tells you that the electric field is force over charge, newtons per coulomb. Okay, that's good that you worked that out. That's, really, that's still pretty important to know. 